Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the first ever discovery of what seems to be a planetary collision, or at least the remains of a planetary collision that happened roughly around 300 light years away from us. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. When it comes to planetary collisions, we know that they have happened many times in our solar system. Pretty much every major planet and even every minor planet has experienced at least one collision, in many cases two or more. For example, we believe Moon was produced as a result of one major collision with Earth. Today we also believe that organic life uh, may have been started as a result of another collision after that. And every major planet has something on the surface that suggests a collision. Like for example for Mars, its northern part is slightly more flattened, suggesting that something collided with it a long time ago. For objects like Jupiter, when we looked on the inside we discovered that it seems to have really unusual composition and density, suggesting that a major planetary collision occurred a few billion years ago. And one of the best examples of signs of a planetary collision comes from Uranus. Here, the planet was actually shifted on its axis of rotation, making it spin on its side, which can only really be explained if something smacked into it. But nevertheless, we've always believed that the collisions between planets are still pretty rare when it comes to human terms. In other words, even though they do happen on a scale of billions of years, they don't happen on a scale of hundreds of years. And because we've only discovered just over 4000 exoplanets out there, we never really thought that we would see a collision between two planets anytime soon. Now, in reality, we still kind of haven't, but we have seen signs indicating that a collision may have occurred anywhere from a few thousand to possibly maximum a million years ago. And all of this is coming to us from an unusual binary star system known as this right here. You can find this on Wikipedia and read a little bit more about it if you'd like. And the paper describing all of this can also be found in the description below. Now to find out all of this, the scientists behind this paper use the absolutely awesome SOFIA telescope, which is of course this right here. It's a telescope built inside the uh, 747 airplane and very recently Scott Manley made a video about this, exploring the insides and learning a little bit more about how all of this works. So if you'd like to learn more, check out the video on his channel. And so what exactly have the scientists here found? Well, they actually used um, the new data and compared it to the old data we've already had to uh, first of all confirm that in this unusual binary system, there seems to be a lot of unusual, relatively warm dust. Now, obviously having dust and asteroids is nothing special, our system is filled with asteroids, but the dust in our system and the asteroid in our solar system are relatively cool, they don't have high temperatures. In this system, not only was there like a million times more mass of dust, but it was also several hundred degrees warmer. Specifically, it was about 120 degrees Kelvin or so, which is about minus 150 Celsius or about minus 240 Fahrenheit. And even though that sounds cold, for dust or for basically asteroids, that's super warm. There is no explanation for why this would be warm, and more so, because the scientists in this paper discovered that in the last few years, this dust has also gone up in temperature, which suggested to the scientists that the amount of total dust has increased over time, as if there were more additional collisions happening and increasing the total mass and the total temperature. Now, there might be another explanation for all of this, but so far the best explanation is that about a thousand years ago, two Earth-like planets or terrestrial planets collided, created a very large amount of silica dust, and all of this dust is now circulating around the star system, creating the temperatures and the patterns we're observing here from Earth. And none of this should really come as a surprise, because for one, this was in a system that has two stars. If you watch some of my previous videos, you know that in a binary star system, it's usually really difficult for orbits to stay stable. There are very few um, ways for a binary system to maintain planets, and in most of these cases, even those uh, planets will not really have stable orbits for too long. This is maybe one of the reasons why we can not actually find anything around the Alpha Centauri system that has two stars. There seems to be no planets there. 
Just to give you a very quick example, here I placed an Earth around a binary uh, system made out of two suns, and you'll notice that almost right away, the Earth's orbit starts uh, becoming extremely chaotic. It doesn't really stay in a stable orbit for very long, and will either get absorbed by one of the stars, or will most likely get kicked out, or if there's another planet in the system, it might end up colliding with it. And this is exactly what we think happened in this system, and what we're observing as a result. Now, there are actually other systems we've discovered where there is or appears to be warm dust. In most of those cases, the dust seems to have come from either the fact that the star itself is very young and is still being developed, or potentially another hazardous event that uh, happened billions of years ago. But for this star system, what's really unusual is that it is not a new star system. As a matter of fact, it's very similar to our sun in terms of age. It's probably a few billion years old, and it seems to have had these planets for billions of years, and suddenly there was a collision after having billions of years of stability. Now that itself is a bit of a mystery. Right now we're not entirely sure how to explain this, and why this collision did not happen earlier, or why it happened at all after such a long time. Now, it's very likely that we'll probably find more star systems where there is quite a lot of warm dust that seems to change over time, and those will also be signs of the planetary collision. But for now, this one here is the best example of this ever happening, and maybe one day we'll even witness the actual planetary collision happening in real time. But the chance for that is really, really low. Although, you never know. If we keep looking, we'll definitely find it one day. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it helped me quite a lot, and space out, and as always, bye-bye.